What is going on, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to another episode of Canadian Cock Talk on the Spurs Up Show, the home of the best Gamecocks content on the internet. What is going on? I'm your host, Noah, and on this episode, I could come up here, I could talk about how the men's basketball team lost to Houston this weekend, I could talk about how our football team got completely blown out to Kentucky, I could talk about our women's team losing to NC State but instead, let's talk about something positive, and we all know what I'm about to talk about. Let's talk about the new South Carolina head coach and the new era of South Carolina football that is upon us. That is right this week in the Gamecocks. As you probably heard, hired new head coach Shane Beamer, homeboy from Charleston, South Carolina. He's coming back home. He used to work for the Gamecocks back when Steve Spurrier was a coach. He worked for us on special teams. He worked uh, cornerbacks he worked recruiting coordinator he knows the area and everything he's been in Columbia at a good time in Gamecock football and I could not be more happy to have Shane Beamer back in Columbia South Carolina so I'm just going to go through what I think are the positives about this hire and what I really like and what I'm excited to see for from Shane Beamer so we all know Shane Beamer used to work at South Carolina I just mentioned that he coached at many different positions he was the uh, recruiting coordinator at one point he ended in 2010 that was the last season when they just fell short in the SEC championship to Cam Newton led Auburn so he's been at Gamecock football in a good time no question about it he's been under the best to ever do it in South Carolina that is Steve Spurrier Lots of positives there. Another thing that I really like about him he's been at a lot of good programs at winning times during them. You look at Georgia and Oklahoma. Those are two teams he's played in a, a couple playoff games before. He's played in a national championship before. I'm talking coaching-wise. So he knows what it's like to be in these big-time games and everything like that. Like, you look at Georgia. Let's say he was the special teams coordinator back then uh, for Georgia, the Georgia Bulldogs. And you look back at that 2018 Rose Bowl, the year that Georgia did make the um, national championship. What won Georgia that game? All in all in that game... What came down to the last play that was really the game breaker for Georgia? It was a blocked field goal in double overtime to give the Bulldogs the ball back. And then the next play or whatever, the Georgia's first play of the whole, uh, their whole drive was a toss to show Sony Michelle and he goes and takes it in for a touchdown. Georgia wins. Yes, I know that he didn't physically go out there and block that punt or that kick, but that's just showing you. Georgia's special teams that year was very, very good, and that was a reason why they were able to be so effective, and it showed in that play right there. You see, if he doesn't block that, and then whatever, Oklahoma goes and stops Georgia, forces them a field goal or something like that, Georgia could have lost that game and not made the national championship. So there's just one piece of why I really like uh, Shane Beamer. He's played in those big games and everything, and he gets his units and everything to step up in those big moments. He's coached all over the field and everything like he's coached everything from quarterbacks to wide receivers to running backs to um what else is he coached outside linebackers cornerbacks special teams where he's been the recruiting coordinator he does it all and he does it all he's been on both sides of the ball so he's got a lot of expertise everywhere in the field and I really like that another thing that I really like is that he's a running backs coach for he's been that for Oklahoma he's been that for Virginia Tech and just in time for, you look at the Gamecocks' next running backs coming up. You have Marshawn Lloyd, a guy who was hurt all season. He was a really highly recruited running back. Just a freak of nature athlete. Like, we all saw him in those practices and everything. He had one highlight that, like, blew up on social media or whatever back in his high school days at DeMatha where he hurdled a guy and took it to the house or something like that. We know what we're getting in Marshawn Lloyd, an absolute beast. And it's embarrassing for me not to mention a guy named Kevin Harris who just led the SEC in rushing over a thousand plus yards. The future of the backfield for South Carolina, especially with the receiving core being so weak coming up, is very exciting. And you just add Shane Beamer in that mix, a guy who's had some really good running backs in his past and has got his units to play very good, is very, very exciting. So the backfield of Harris and Marshawn Lloyd paired up with Shane Beamer is going to be really, really exciting. Now the main reason... Why many of you Gamecock fans, if you are one of these people, don't like this hire and would have rathered Billy Napier is mainly because of the question that 
He's never been a head coach before, so why are we going out and we are hiring this guy when we could have got Billy Napier? Well, he said that he's going to stay at Louisiana, but let's say a guy like Billy Napier or Hugh Freeze or someone like that who's been a head coach and everything and ha are having these successful like group of five programs and everything. I honestly don't care about the he whole head coaching thing or not. If you feel like you can come into Columbia with Shane Beamer in his interviews and everything the last couple days or whatever, all he said is, the expectation is to get to Atlanta, it's to win the SEC championship, it's to get here, it's to get here. If you could come in and just be that go-getter guy, I love that he's going in and saying all this stuff because even if he falls up short, he knows what the expectation has to be. He knows what all the fans are thinking. He knows where he wants to be for the Gamecocks, and that's a huge factor. We don't want some guy who's going to come in and be like, yeah, let's just make the poll uh, three times a year or once every couple of years or something like that. Beamer knows where he wants to take that program, and he's not afraid to be verbal on it. One reason I love guys like Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach are just guys who are not afraid to speak their mind or whatever. They're just guys who will run their mouth in an interview and everything, and I honestly like that. If you're able to come out with that kind of confident attitude, even though Mike Leach's Bulldogs after that first game did not play very well, but you look at a guy like Lane Kiffin, his team is really good this year. They have a really bright future in Ole Miss, especially that offense. Those are two guys I really love watching coaching. And if Shane Beamer is able to come out here and say all this stuff, I'm all for it. If he wants to say it, if he wants to set our expectations high, if he wants to get our program to that point, there's some kind of accountability. And by him saying this stuff, it's going to make him accountable for all these things. So I really like that coming out of the gate, how he has that confidence to go out here and say that stuff. I really like that from him. Going back to the no head coaching thing, especially a guy like Billy Napier, we look at Will Muschamp. Where did he coach before? Was the main reason we hired him probably is because he used to work under Nick Saban. There's been so many guys who have worked under Nick Saban before. And here's a little stat for you: no assistant has ever beat Nick Saban before in a game. So if we went out and we hired an Alabama ex assistant or something like that, we're basically just saying, well, our expectation is to get to Atlanta and lose. That's the highest our ceiling can go because we cannot beat Nick Saban. No assistant has ever done it because. He just outsmarts them, and the whole idea of being under Nick Saban is completely irrelevant now because when these guys used to work under Nick Saban, the style of football in college football was completely different. It has no relevance to what we're talking about now. You're telling me that you see in this year of 2020, this unbelievable year of 2020 in college football, you see... Nine to six games like you would have seen back in 2011 against the number one Alabama Crimson Tide, or that was LSU was number one, Alabama was number two. You're telling me you see nine to six games in SEC play? You're telling me that you see Alabama hold teams under nine and you they only score six points? No, that just doesn't happen. Sure, Alabama shut out the Mississippi States and the Kentuckys, but even teams like Auburn, even teams like Ole Miss, teams like who else have they played that they've had a decent battle against? Teams like Texas A&M, they've all scored more than nine points. And have you ever seen Alabama this season score less than like 20 points or 30 points? No, because the style of football is completely different. Nick Saban has adapted to that so well. He's been able to go out and just make an offensive powerhouse of a program now in this year of 2020 and the years coming because we saw back then, back in the late, to, or, yeah, late 2000s and the early 2010s, it was all about defense. It was all about low-scoring game. You're going to run the ball into the ground. It was all about who can win at the line of scrimmage, whose defense is going to show up in the big moments and everything like that. Now it's all offensive-based. Everything is about your offense. Everything is about how many points you can put up on the board. It's not about how much you can limit the other team to because back then, defense ruled everything. Completely different time now. So that whole, yeah, I used to work for Nick Saban thing is completely irrelevant because First of all, you're not going to have Nick Saban coaching for South Carolina unless you have Nick Saban coaching for South Carolina. It's as simple as that. You're not going to have Nick Saban as your head coach unless Nick Saban physically is suited up in garden and black and his khakis and his headset and everything like that on the sideline on williams Bryce Stadium every Saturday. That's just not going to happen. Nick Saban, I've heard rumors and everything on Twitter. I have no clue how true this is, so do not quote me on this, but I've heard that he's going to retire after this season. Nick Saban was never on the table, so we shouldn't even think about it. We shouldn't even think about getting a guy like Nick Saban because 
we're not going to get him. No matter what, unless we get Nick Saban, we're not going to have him. So the fact that Nate, uh, I mean, Beamer has never been a head coach before, he's never worked under Saban, I could care less. He's played in good programs. He's played all over the field. I mean, by playing, I mean coaching. He's coached all over the field on both sides of the ball. And he has that experience already in Carolina. He knows the grounds and everything. He's from South Carolina. And this kind of reminds me of a whole Coach O situation where, like, he went in as the head coach at LSU, and he's from Louisiana, and he wanted to go bring a state trophy home to um, his people and everything like that. I'm feeling kind of the same thing from Shane Beamer here. He wants to do the same for the state of South Carolina, bring a natty back here, bring an SEC championship, bring whatever back. And I'm excited for this new era of Shane Beamer football. I have to mention it, mention it if I'm talking about Shane Beamer. Got to bring the Shane train back. Go get your Shane train t-shirts right now. Destination Atlanta, Georgia, because that's where the Gamecocks are heading with Shane Beamer. Definitely get those in TSUS dot store right now. Great price, great design, great deal. Go rep your new head ball coach with those right now. And thank you for watching this video. Definitely come back next time. And as always, spurs up. Go Gamecocks and come back next time.